Hello, welcome to this presentation by FERN, the Foundation for the Education and Research in Neurological Emergencies. This educational lecture is titled, The Evaluation of Emergency Department Dizziness Patients, New Concepts. My name is Edward Sloan. I am currently Medical Director of the Physician Assistance Studies Program at Dominican University. I have most recently been an attending physician at Carl Foundation Hospital, and I am Professor Emeritus in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Support for the development of this lecture was provided by EB Medicine. I am currently President and Board Chair of FERN. The content for this lecture comes in large part by the monograph titled The Timing and Triggers Approach to the Patient with Acute Dizziness by Jonathan Edlow. It was published in Emergency Medicine Practice by EB Medicine, December 2019. Other parts of this educational lecture and the complete lecture are available at the Fern.org website or on our YouTube Fern.org channel. Also available is the June 2020 podcast, which was presented to participants in 46 countries, as well as a CME option on the EB Medicine website at ebmedicine.net, as well as at the specific website address noted below. Please note the disclaimer listed below. In general, this information is intended to augment and not replace the clinical judgment that guides the management of any individual patient. So as we consider nystagmus, I want to bring forward now Dr. Edlode's new approach to the dizziness exam. Remember his dizziness history, a test. And now let's take a look at the clinical pathway, which has three portions highlighted. We're asking three general questions. What about any cause that could be related to a general medical cause such as dehydration? Then we want to establish whether there's an acute vestibular syndrome. And lastly, if it's not an acute vestibular syndrome, we want to know whether the intermittent dizziness is triggerable or it occurs spontaneously. So, the reason I bring this up is as follows. I'm going to talk about now causes of what are likely central causes of nystagmus. And these bad types of nystagmus are suggestive of a central etiology, not labyrinthine, only in the setting of an acute vestibular syndrome. My point here is this. If a patient has acute, severe, persistent vertigo at presentation, there are nystagmus findings that suggest a central etiology. So someone comes in with five hours of severe, constant dizziness, that's acute vestibular syndrome. And in an acute vestibular syndrome, here are the following things, the types of nystagmus that suggest a central etiology. Number one, without gaze stimulation and apparent constant lateral nystagmus that occurs with central gaze. Another bad type of nystagmus that suggests central etiology is vertical or torsional nystagmus. Vertical, vertical, up and down, torsional or rotational, which is circular. Those types of nystagmus and acute vestibular syndrome are suggestive of a central etiology. Again, we stated that with central gaze at your face, no stimulation of gaze side to side, if the nystagmus appears to worsen, that's a likely central cause. And lastly, a lateral nystagmus that changes its fast component with gaze to both sides. In other words, if you have gaze to the left and then you have quick nystagmus right, and with gaze to the right, you have quick nystagmus left, in acute vestibular syndrome, that again suggests a central etiology. So what are those again? In acute vestibular syndrome, those nystagmus findings that suggest a central etiology such as posterior stroke, they include pure lateral horizontal nystagmus without gaze stimulation, vertical nystagmus, rotational or torsional nystagmus, Worsening nystagmus with 
central gaze. And lastly, lateral nystagmus that changes its fast component direction with gaze to each side. Gaze to the left, quick nystagmus right. Gaze to the right, quick nystagmus left. All of these are considered bad or likely central cause findings with acute vestibular syndrome. The reason I keep pointing out the concept of these are bad findings in acute vestibular syndrome is this. With posterior canal BPPV, the nystagmus often can be vertical and or rotational. And in horizontal canal BPPV, the nystagmus is horizontal and direction changing with gaze. And so it's important to know that with triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, specifically the diagnosis of BPPV, these are benign findings, but with acute vestibular syndrome, these are considered serious findings because they suggest a central etiology. Therefore, your nystagmus interpretation depends on the presumed diagnosis, either acute vestibular syndrome, in which these findings are considered serious, or triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, specifically BPPV, in which case these findings can be found to be with this peripheral diagnosis. I understand that this is a very uh, confusing topic. I suggest you listen to this a few times, but remember only one concept drives this. Your interpretation of nystagmus findings is dependent upon whether or not Prior to assessment for nystagmus, the patient appears to be presenting with an acute vestibular syndrome or they just have what sounds like triggered episodic dizziness or episodic vestibular syndrome, in which case BPPV is the more likely diagnosis. So, what is the nystagmus exam requirement? You must establish if the nystagmus exam is being done in the setting of either suspected acute vestibular syndrome, AVS, or triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, or TEVS, which suggests BPPV or a peripheral cause. In, AVF, in AVS, or acute vestibular syndrome, the bad nystagmus signs are worri worrisome, and in triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, these same, quote, bad nystagmus signs are benign or more likely benign due to per peripheral vestibular etiology in BPPV, which is due to an otolith problem in your semicircular canals. So remember, before determining your nystagmus exam interpretation, you need to determine the likely etiology first and examine the setting of AVS or triggered episodic vestibular syndrome. So, we had a list of bad nystagmus suggesting central findings for acute vestibular syndrome. However, in BPPV, a triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, there's only one nystagmus finding that may be suggestive of a central etiology. In a patient with a presumed peripheral etiology or BPPV in triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, if with gaze to you centrally, the nystagmus appears to work, worsen, this is the one finding that may suggest a central etiology, even if the exam sounds more, or the history sounds more like a triggered episodic vestibular syndrome and likely BPPV. So, our central gaze key concept to reiterate. In general, nystagmus that is related to a peripheral vestibular problem will improve with fixed central gaze to your face at a comfortable distance. So, you ask the patient to look at your nose from a comfortable distance right in front of them. If with fixed central gaze at your nose, the nystagmus does not improve or worsens, then you should suspect the central etiology of the nystagmus, again, because peripheral causes generally improve with central gaze fixation. In conclusion, 
The ATTEST system for the evaluation of the dizzy patient includes the following. A. Associated symptoms. TT. Timing and triggers. ES. Examination signs. And T. Confirmatory testing. A test. When evaluating an ED patient with dizziness, please consider the following. Using the ATTEST system for evaluating ED dizzy patients, those patients with acute, severe, continuous symptoms should be considered to have acute vestibular syndrome. Patients who have intermittent symptoms or non-continuous symptoms at the time of evaluation are noted to either have triggered or spontaneous episodes of dizziness and vertigo. Topping the list of diagnoses using the ATTEST system are orthostasis, BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and posterior stroke. BPPV can be diagnosed with the Dix Hallpike maneuver and can be treated with the Epley maneuver either in the emergency department or in follow up. It is noted that you should evaluate patients with caution in the setting of the COVID 19 pandemic as the COVID virus can cause neurological symptoms and or can complicate those neurological symptoms because of poor PO intake and dehydration, which can cause orthostasis. Electronic medical record templates and dot phrases can help to make the exam process more systematic and easily accomplished using the ATTEST system. When evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department, the following is recommended. Understand that the dizziness pathologies using the ATTEST system fall into three diagnostic strata and basically involve six diagnoses and three specific treatments for those diagnoses. Also recommended is that you study the nystagmus findings, significance, and BPPV maneuvers, Hall, Pike, and Epley, online and in the monograph from which this lecture was obtained. Also, create EMR templates and dot phrases to exclude posterior stroke findings in your dizzy patients in the emergency department. Explain the etiology of the dizziness, including the diagnosis and treatment, and provide appropriate referral for patients with dizziness, explaining to them symptoms which should cause them to come back to the emergency department for repeat evaluation. Lastly, Utilize caution when evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department in the setting of COVID-19, as this virus has both neurological complications and symptoms and can cause orthostasis due to decreased PO intake. If you have specific questions related to this educational content, please send an email to fern.org at gmail.com. We encourage you to go to the fern.org website for more content related to this educational program and other content related to the care of patients who present to the emergency department with acute illness and injury related to neurological emergencies. Thank you for your participation in this Fern educational program.